My name is Morgan Dunbar. I recently turned 31. I'm from Buffalo, New York. And um, for me, um, the experience was not as I expected it to be. You know, everybody says come down um, without intentions, but the hype about ayahuasca is undeniable. Um, so I thought I was par paramountly concerned about seeing demons, seeing my own death, and um, that, that did not happen for me. I didn't have any visions. I did not see any spirits come to me. I, for the most part, um, was able to have the time during ceremony be a quiet time with myself where I took the intentions um, that I had written up prior to the first ceremony, including, you know, learning to choose the better feeling thought. Because for me, in any situation, I often don't do that. And that just feeds my depression. It feeds my self-loathing. And that, for me, was the most important thing to come away with. I had many other intentions, which unbelievably, I would say that they've all um, materialized in two weeks here. Um, it's just amazing. So uh, for me, the experience in the actual ceremony was, I called it kind of like a flashback opportunity, just memories, even memories that were not even, um, you know, life-changing memories. Just the ayahuasca gave me an opportunity to just go through memories very gentle memories, many of them, some not, and choose the better feeling thought pertaining to those memories. And I did that. And um, as things popped up for me throughout the retreat, where normally I'd snap on somebody, normally I would, you know, just go back to old habits. I found myself sharing, which is hard for me, um, only child. So that uh, sharing, showing and, and receiving love, it was unbelievably transformative for me. And I just want to let people know that if you don't get this typical, like, you know, skywalk, well, not typical, but the skywalking experience of visions, you know, as long as you trust that medicine is going to give you what you need and really trust it. Because if, you know, if you don't see stuff and you're just like, it didn't work for me. Well, it is working for you. You don't even know. Maybe months ahead of, in line, you know, ahead of time, it's going to happen then. Most of my intentions and, and, and realizations and breakthroughs came in between the ceremonies, sharing time with the women around me. And um, to be honest, like I said earlier, you know, most of my trauma stems from female interactions, severe bullying in school and that kind of trickled down throughout the rest of my life with any interactions I had um, in community organizing, um, you know, butting noses with other people. And um, here it was the first time in my life that I have experienced any kind of female camaraderie, com uh, female allyship, and I'm just so incredibly grateful for that. And all the activities were amazing. I learned that I could paint. I learned that I can write about, you know, journal-wise, writing in per pertaining to myself. I was, you know, did some journalism, but I haven't written for myself in since I was 14 years old. And the insights I had when I was 14 were right on point. When those traumas came from the bullying, I had to take on a, a steel outside, which didn't allow for things like poetry anymore, you know, and um, I have got it back now. I've, I've, I'm collecting the bones, as um, you might say, uh, pertaining to one of the stories in The Women Who Run With Wolves, which I uh, read here also, um, collecting the bones, um, singing to the bones, and watching those bones flesh out, you know, if, if it's a hairy animal, they get fur, run away, singing you know that's what that's the process I'm going through I'm just it's unbelievable um, for me as far as the actual structure the the location um, being close to the water was number one for me I'm a water sign so that was like a huge 
uh, plus in my, in my uh, decision to come here. Um, the actual accommodations room-wise are wonderful. Um, you know, everything's clean um, and, you know, it's just very comfortable, very comfortable. The hammocks, it's like you got a place to swing and get a little breeze and it's just awesome. The food was awesome. I'm also a vegan, so I didn't really have a concern about that because I figured, you know, the ayahuasca diet's pretty accommodating already to vegans, but I never wanted for anything here. Um, I, I just love the entire experience. Um, one of the things that I really loved and appreciated were, was the local community, being involved in the retreat itself. Also, um, you know, as far as cooks, um, the people that came in and cleaned for us, um, the people who would take our washing and wash it by the river. Um, that was just such an intimate, also females, mostly. And again, it was just a confirmation again that you can trust. You can trust women. You can trust community experiences. This is all good, Morgan. Let it go. And um, that was awesome. And then when you go into the community, the Mishana community, right down the lane there, it's like everybody smiles, welcoming. You know, I don't speak Spanish, which I'm going to work on, but, you know, wanting to tell you things like muy beja i was like what does that mean it means there's bees down by the water you better watch out <laughs> and i found that out but it's just like everybody's trying to help you you know everybody's trying to be nice and great <laughs> <laughs> oh maestra Dani Dani wilma she is amazing she, um i didn't exactly know what to expect but her the smile on the website was not misleading at all. Um, she is a strong woman. She is a compassionate woman. She is probably how I would like to envision myself as far as having that nice mixture between, you know, letting people know right off the bat, you know, I have strength. I'm not to be messed with, but I have love and I do what I do because of love. And um, she's amazing. Facilitators, awesome. Everybody, what through Linda, Sky, Rachel, everybody just kind of had their own little thing that they were, you know, contributed, especially that I needed personally. The conversations that I had with each one of these women were pretty much daily and, and so nourishing to my soul. It's been honestly the soul food I've been waiting for for my whole life. In my, in my opinion, I'm not sure how the other retreats uh, go, but the women's retreat offered um, creative activities, a lot of painting, soul collages, which I'm going to be sharing with my family, the flower baths, the, even the purgatives, you know, I wasn't looking forward to it, but got through it, made me feel stronger. Um, all of those things, I think, is, you know, if you're thinking about cost-wise, if somebody, if that's a concern, which is understandable, what you get out of this experience is far surpasses the financial, um, you know, what you're putting out there financially. I mean, and like the actual flower baths, like we ended with a love bath, and I'm just like, yes, this is the best souvenir I can bring home to my baby, because, because I haven't always shown um, him the, the love and and compassion that he deserves and um, I'm just so excited to go home and start implementing all that I've learned in my life. I would say as, um, as to try to just advocate for this women's retreat I would say that you know as women we even if you don't realize or want to acknowledge that this is what's happening we've been um, forcibly boxed in from day one um, domestication is uh, un unfortunately a disease that has affected all of us um, all over the world um, as females and coming here it was a time to shake all of that off literally we did qigong in the morning we shook that right off I was gonna say a choice word but we shook that stuff right off and um, again you know the community camaraderie can heal us of all of those things. The traumas that have happened in our lives when we feel like we're alone. 
because we're powerful in, in numbers. We're powerful as women when we come together. And they, you know, they make sure that that's not easy for us to feel comfortable to do in our society. And that happens here.